Hello everyone, this is Jozef Noit here and today I'm bringing you a video, a short tutorial on the pre-processing tool of OpenFoam called Transform Points, which you can use for a couple of things like for example translating your mesh, scaling your mesh or rotating your mesh. You already might know this tool for scaling from meters to millimeter, from millimeters to meters this way, but you can do also other things. So. For this tutorial, I downloaded an object file of a dolphin from this web address and I created a snappy hex mesh mesh with this and we will scale, translate and rotate this dolphin and I show you how this works. So why would you do trans use transform points? And the most prominent use of this utility is if you, your geometry is in millimeters and of course you need your mesh in meters in OpenFoam and you scale it with a factor of 0 0.001. But for example, I had a couple of simulations where the CAD engineer gave me an STL file which was located 50 meters in the X direction and 120 meters in the Y direction, far away from the origin. And I wanted to compare my geometry with the real life geometry. And then I opened up the simulations in Paraview and then they were meters away from each other. And then I, I didn't know what was happening. So th with this, you can help and translate your mesh wherever you want. And also if your geometry is uh, oriented weirdly, you can turn and rotate your geometry. And if you don't see these weird things in your geometry and you already created your mesh with millions of uh, cells, then you can do this after meshing. And the command is called transform points, as you see here. And the cool thing about this utility is that it does not load the entire mesh. It only loads the points, so the nodes of the mesh and nothing else. It only modifies the values in constant poly mesh and points. And this is really cool. And uh, if you want to know what the, the different possibilities are, then you can just type in to your bash, your terminal, transform points, space, and then minus help. And then you will get all the possibilities. And it also works in parallel. This is something I want to add here. Okay, so we will go through these modifi mesh modifications uh, one by one. And for that, I prepared you here a case for transfer points, actually two cases. I created a mesh of this dolphin and made two copies uh, and I called them Flippy and Floppy. Flippy is our going to be our reference dolphin uh, to see what the original position was and Floppy is going to be or lab rat dolphin. So let me just load Flippy here in Paraview. And uh, maybe I already show you what I meant before with the points. So as you know, the mesh is stored in PolyMesh and you have a couple of mesh files and the nodes are located in points. And these are, if I zoom in here on Flippy, these are the nodes of the cells and only these points are loaded and modified and not the entire cell inv or mesh information. And so this is uh, why transform points is rather fast compared to other preprocessing utilities. Okay, so this was Flippy. So I'm going to just call him Flippy here and I'll just load also floppy. This has nothing to do with the floppy disk from the 90s. Okay, so let's call him Floppy here. And then Floppy is going to have a color, let's say red. And Flippy is going to be blue. So you see, if I get rid of Floppy, then we have Flippy here. And you see that we have now two dolphins loaded. And now we can just start. So you can do this in Windows 10 with the Ubuntu under Windows 10. Nowadays it's really simple to install Ubuntu in Windows 10. I have an older 
tutorial on that but since then you don't need the developer mode you only have to enable the windows subsystem for linux and then you can just go to the microsoft store and download ubuntu and if you're uh, doing this on native ubuntu then just open a terminal and just follow along the the commands so i have my files in my documents in my windows documents and then in transform point so i have to go there so i created a symbolic link but you can usually go to your documents by going to slash mntc and then users and then your username and documents and so on but i already created a symbolic link to my documents and check out my vi my t uh, tip videos on how to do this and transform points and then it's called case and here you see flippy and floppy and i told you to we will modify floppy okay so now as i mentioned if i type in transform transform points minus help you get all the possibilities what you can do you can open the documentation and the help and blah 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 we will concentrate on these geometric modifications so the first is translate so if i want to translate the, the geometry C, uh, cfd mesh then i have to tr uh, type in minus transfer point space minus translate and then a vector in this format as it says and it also says here so now what i want to do is i want to move floppy okay let's say in this direct if i want to move floppy in the po positive x direction by let's see he has a width of 75 meters so she's huge so i this geometry was also created in millimeters so i want to move him by 100 meters here to the positive x direction how do i do this transform points minus and then just translate here this entry and then as it says here 100 zero, zero. so this will translate floppy in the positive x direction by 100 meters and not in the y not in the z direction enter and if i go back to paraview and i refresh floppy zoom out and in now you see that floppy moved and flippy is here our reference dolphin and as you see i destroyed a little bit parts of uh, the dolphins but oh well um so we just moved floppy by 100 meters the, the next po possibility is to scale and you might already know this this is what you do if you scale something from millimeters to meters and now this is what you would do transform points minus scale and then 0 0.001 0 0.001 0 0.001 so in the, with this command you scale floppy in all in x y and z direction by 1000 so i press enter and if i refresh floppy then all of a sudden we don't see him big y if i get rid of flippy then here is floppy and if i zoom now out so this is the red one is floppy and here is flippy so it's a tiny floppy is a tiny speck compared to flippy so another possibility of scaling is instead of using a vector you can just type in a number if you want to scale him with the same amount in the x y and z direction so we could now type in scale 1000 and now this will move back floppy to his or original um, height or whatever size this is what i wanted to show you okay or if i want to just scale him down now by a factor of two for example then he is going to be a small dolphin compared to flippy okay so this is the second scale command and now you have four possibilities to rotate your geometry so if you have an internal geometry you can just rotate it also an external geometry you can 
rotate it. And you can do this with four different approaches. The first two, roll pitch yo and yo pitch roll, are very similar. You can define the angles with which you want to rotate your geometry. So let's just start with roll pitch yo and then <clears throat> you will see what this means. Okay, so let me just type in help because I am lazy and I'm just going to copy this right mouse button and again right mouse button and now I want to rotate floppy by 90, 0 and 0 and I press enter. Now you see that floppy was moved by 90 degrees around the x-axis. So this is the first value is the roll degree, so the, or in this case it's the x-axis. For transform points I can just move him back to show you that he really moves around the x-axis. Now he's back and then the pitch is the y-axis with this command. So if I type in or if I refresh, as you see, he was rotated by 90 degree around the Y axis and I turn him back. And then the last one is the Z axis. If I refresh him, you see, he was turned around the Z axis. And then, if I let me turn him back, yeah, and so, and the difference between a roll pitch yo and yo pitch roll is the, is the angles. So if, with roll pitch yo, it's X, Y and Z with the command, with this command, yo pitch roll, uh, let me just, it's not X, Y, Z, but it's Z, Y, X. So you can use both of them. So for example, if I now specify the first entry by 90 degrees, it also in this case, flop is going to be uh, rotated around the Z axis and not the X. So this is the only difference, nothing else. Okay, so let's just continue with the rotate. And this rotates from a certain vector to another vector. So let's just type, uh, try this out. Let's just rotate it from the x axis to the, to, to the y positive uh, x axis to the positive z axis. Okay. So let's just type in rotate. And then we have to specify two vectors. Oops, like this and zero, zero, 001. Okay, so what we are now doing is, uh, I forgot something, sorry. It's, this is the correct way to define it. Now it works. Okay, so what happens now? I should have, uh, I really should have, okay, let me just undo this. Let me just rotate him back. Okay, so this is the original configuration. And if I now change to rotate the uh, floppy's positive X direction into his uh, positive Z direction, then this is what happens. So his positive X direction to, so his left hand side or right hand side is going to be the positive Z direction. As you see, his left hand side is now the positive Z direction. So this is how you can rotate from one vector to another vector. And then as you saw before, uh, we can just rotate him back to his original position. Okay. And you can also do this by specifying a certain, uh, certain axis and uh, an angle. So let's just use this. So let's rotate floppy around the the x 
positive the x-axis by 45 degrees let's see what's happening so we want to take a look at flopping from this direction and let's go for help again because i'm lazy so let's just copy this here and then let's define the axis to be the uh, x direction and 45 degrees okay so let's major, uh, let me show you refresh and as you see he was rotated around the x axis by 45 degrees and we can turn him again back as you see here now he's back to his original position and as you see here you have two additional auxiliary entry with rotate fields and origin and what these do origin with the origin you can specify a certain origin of the rotation so not just zero 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 and <clears throat> rotate fields rotates also fi uh, vector and tensor fields so for example your velocity if you already have a pre-calculated result and then you want to rotate the, uh, your whole entire case not just the mesh and you can do so and you can rotate your velocity field or if you have a fancy turbulence model you can also rotate the tensor field of your turbulence model okay so that's it that's what I wanted to show you with flippy and floppy I hope that you find this useful and that you will use this I would like to thank you for watching and listening and I hope to see you next time.